Yes, I have a large July TBR here, and no, we're not going to feel anxious about it. We're going to crush it, find new faves, and hope it rains every single day in July so I can live my introverted dream and can veg and read all day. Be a bro, Mother Nature. Hook me up with some good reading time. So as you know, I am coming back to booktube after having only uploaded about once a month this year and decided that I feel ready to make monthly TBRs again. I love filming these videos because not only does it like it keeps me organized and excited about reading, but I feel maybe it puts books on your radar that maybe you might have missed. I feel like I've missed out on so much and there are so many amazing books coming out in the second half of the year. I have so much catching up to do. I have a variety of fantasy genres here, so whatever mood I'm feeling in July, I know I can find it in this stack. So let's just talk about the first one and that is The Will of the Many. This is a fantasy novel with a dark magical school setting that is being compared to Name of the Wind, so that's one of the many reasons to be excited about it. It's the first book to a new series by this author. I actually never got to his previous trilogy this series right here. I own it, but for some reason it always intimidated me. Huh, I wonder why. <laughs> like was the length really necessary? Because this feels like a prison sentence. But then again, this here is over 500 pages. It's only the first book, so our book two and three going to follow suit and be bigger. The magic system here um, revolves around people seeding their will into someone else to give them power, which I think sounds very unique and opens up a buttload of possibilities for an exciting plot. And I'm very pumped about it. I actually might film a reading vlog for this, so look out for that in July. So not only do I have that over 500 page book, but I have this one too, which is Gods of the Weirdwood. This is the author who wrote the huge hit fantasy series, The Tide Child, that involved ships made out of dragon bones, and we have another really cool sounding fantasy from him. This is a brand new start to a new series called The Forsaken. I believe it just came out at the tail end of June and the setting involves like this dark forest, obviously as the title suggests. I am really in the mood for something like that. It also plays with the prophecy slash chosen one trope, but the character who is the chosen one actually turns out not to be. Maybe. And there's a new rising champion. I could just imagine like how much chaos that character is going to unleash when they reveal their existence. I think it sounds really fun, the idea of there being multiple chosen ones and people chosen by different gods sounds really, really cool and I'm looking forward to seeing um, how it all plays out. So as you can see here, that is already well over 1,000 pages and just two books already. So let's tone it down a little bit with a shorter fantasy and that is The Hunters. I'm sure you've heard of the Articles of Faith duology which included the Blackhawks and the Righteous. Well, Dave Rag has a new book coming out on July 20th that he gave me the opportunity to read early, The Hunters, and I'm really, really excited about it because it takes place in the desert. And if you know me, you know that I love desert, western-like fantasy. Blame Red Country by Joe Abercrombie for that. That is like one of the best western fantasy I've ever read. I think this sounds so fun. It's set in a hot, sweaty mining country. We follow a middle-aged woman named Re, who is a horse farmer, I believe, with a bit of like a troubled past. And she lives with her 12-year-old niece just outside of the city, but they suddenly are hunted by a dangerous group, which forces them on the run. Honestly, out of all the books that I'm talking about today, which are all very exciting, it might be leading the pack because it just has so many elements that I love. An older protagonist protecting a younger one, like a mother and daughter um, bond almost, that we rarely see in fantasy. Gunslingers, um, the sound of it reminds me a lot of Three by Jay Posey, a really fantastic fantasy western horror novel I always recommend. So yeah, I think this one is going to, to knock my socks off, so keep a lookout for it for my review later in the month. So last year, Orbit Books released a video game novel, Ruination, which is based off of League of Legends, and I loved it. So when they announced Cyberpunk 2077, no coincidence, I was really excited because I really enjoyed Cyberpunk. Sure, it had its problems, which honestly made it funnier. I still really enjoyed my time with that game. And there's also a Netflix series called Edge Runners that is supposedly really good. I have yet to watch it. But this releases August 8th, and I want to get a head start on it. Cyberpunk 2077 is set in a sci-fi cyberpunk city called Night City, where this book takes place. And we follow a group of strangers who steal this mysterious artifact they saw being transported by a convoy belonging to Militech, who is the largest manufacturer of military-grade weapons. Obviously, there's going to be consequences from that. Very excited to see how this reads. I believe this is a Polish author and it's being translated into English, so I'm very curious to see his viewpoint 
on this fascinating world. Blade of Dream, a sequel I've been dying to continue and I can finally do so. This is the second book to Age of Ash, an adult fantasy written by one of the co-authors of the Expanse book. So quite a heavy hitter sci-fi series there. And he definitely extended the intricacies to this new series. I do really hope um, I can find some type of refresher because I am struggling a little bit remembering details from Age of Ash. I knew it follows a young girl who experiences a tragedy at the beginning of the book and decides she needs to go investigate further, uncovering a shebang of conspiracy corruption within this huge city. Age of Ash did end on a cliffhanger, so I'm really pumped to see how things develop here. That's really all I can say with this one without spoiling more. In fact, I, I personally think there's even a spoiler in the synopsis of Age of Ash. So <laughs> I recommend going into them blind, but we'll see in my review at the end of the month if this lived up to my own hype. And lastly, I would love to get to Dark Water Daughter. Every time I talk about this book, I want to say Dark Water Sister. I don't know why, but Dark water daughter <laughs> now i do have this on my kindle but as a physical reader i really want to read this book physically so i might wait until i have a copy in my hands when it releases later in the month i've been excited about this one since it was announced but i've already heard such amazing things actually i've only seen glowing reviews for this this is a nautical fantasy with pirates that i guess has a wintry setting i didn't realize that and then it verified it for me even more when I realized the series is called The Winter Sea. I assumed pirates meant summer, but we got a twist on our hands. I love winter anyway, so I'm, I'm perfectly fine with this. this. This makes it even more exciting. It's an epic fantasy that follows a winter witch and a disgraced naval officer as they race to take down a pirate lord. It sounds like another really unique fantasy with a fun setting, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Alrighty, so I believe that is a total of six books as of right now. These are my priority reads for the month of July. Let me know what you're going to be reading, um, what are you looking forward to picking up the most, because I would love to know, and until we meet again, happy reading.